And so, hello friends. Um, today is the 27th uh, in uh, just under two hours. Salt Lake City is more or less closed by order of the mayor as a response to the pandemic. I think it's responsible and it sucks both at the same time. As a result, I'm going to be losing my work for a while. Um, hopefully it'll count as a layoff so I can get unemployment. I don't know, though. Um, we'll just have to find out. Uh, what else? Um, working on Gonzo Rising Easter Special. Uh, I don't think I have a way to show you the image I've got. Hi, James. Uh, working on the Gonzo Rising Easter Special. Uh, some of the people you see over my head will be in the show. Uh, oh, I should see if um, I should see if Bunny uh, is free to join. Um, it's going to be uh, pre-recorded acts with a live MC. Hi, Kevin. I saw the bad news. Um, sorry. Uh, hang in there, buddy. You got a lot of people pulling for you guys. Um, so remind me to ask Bunny if she wants to do a, sh uh, if she has a recording she wants to show it. Maybe, uh, if you've got a copy of Crepe, Bunny, if you ever see this, um, and I gotta see if I get permission to, uh, use the video clip I have of the, uh, ballerina dinosaur. So I'm, um, exploring using, uh, V mix as software. It looks really good. It's got a few odd quirks. It doesn't like vertical format videos uh, because I played two of them and one of them uh, and one of them it rotated. Um, so I'm going to have to uh, look at the settings. It's one of those open source things, which means sometimes there's a bit of a learning curve. However, I'm really liking it. I, I think um, this will work. And it's supposed to be able to uh, record and also to uh, stream, uh, and it can stream multiple streams. So I'm thinking of going both um, YouTube Live and um, Twitch, because I think I can do both streams simultaneously. Um, I might even be able to do Facebook Live at the same time. I will throw it on as many platforms as I can. And the ones I can't stream live, I'm going to uh, record the show uh, and share it uh, all over the place too. Um, it's a free show. We're not we're not charging to see the show. Uh, we will be plugging uh, Venmo uh, codes for to tip the performers. Um, so uh, please be generous if you can. I'm not going to have your children, uh, Javier. I'm I'm just not. Um, I, I, you, you know what? I happen to know you don't like children, so meh. I have seen what you do. Uh, so Gonza Rising Easter Special is going to happen, um, and it looks like uh, I have some quality uh, possibilities as for how to stream it, um, which is good. Uh, it will be very mixed quality because I'm getting the videos from the performers on their phone or however they record it. Um, and it will be intermixed with essentially this, this right here. Um, I have a better quality webcam I'm going to be using if it arrives. I ordered it from Amazon ages ago. Um, but there's a run on webcams right now and you can imagine why. Um, do I know any theater that needs stage crew? Uh, this is not a good time, uh, but I do possibly uh, know someone who needs uh, stage crew after quarantine. Um, uh, hey, Javier, look what I got on my desk. And I'm gonna I'm gonna learn a card trick. So that when we finally get the uh, the magicians group back together, I'll be able to uh, do at least some paltry trick. Uh, performers are going to send me their videos, and and I'm going to be a live MC here. I'm going to dress up.
Uh, we've got a nice outfit. Um, oh, sending video. Thank you, Javier. Thank you. Um, if you know any performers that would like to get in on this act, um, share a video. If they also share Venmo information, either in the video or make sure I have it, uh, we can also get them tip tips, potentially. Um, I will take as many acts as want to get in on it. Um, it's virtual. I don't have to be out by 9 o'clock because the venue closes. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it just wouldn't be a weirdo show with, without uh, Demonio. It, it just, it wouldn't. Um, but looking at this poster behind me, I see uh, a couple of these performers that uh, I want to reach out to and see uh, from, from the earlier days of Gonzo Rising and see if they want to be part of the show. Uh, because a lot of us have a lot of spare time right now. Uh, and, um, yeah, I, I honestly, I'll, I'll take almost anything as long as it's not like Nazi propaganda. So yeah, out of work. Um, have a monologue, uh, have Gravedigger do, uh, uh, tell a story or do a monologue. Um, but James, uh, tell a joke. It, it could be like a 10 second video clip telling a joke. Um, and, and, uh, I, I, I've got some very short clips that I'm going to use as a fake ad break. Uh, so yeah, uh, out of work sucks. Um, locked in, not, not locked in, not, not quarantined. Um, I'm technically in Mill Creek, so we are not locked down the way Salt Lake City is going to be. Um, but everywhere I go is in Salt Lake City. Um, so I'm going to be going on walks, solitary. Um, and I thought, um, <laughs> Bryce, I thought, uh, at the beginning of all this that I'd be very busy and I would do, you know, I, I would learn new, new skills and I would paint every day and I would do a video every day. And, um, every day just isn't how I am, man. Um, but, uh, now that I'm not working, I, I will probably be more productive of these sort of things. Um, yeah. And your baseline health isn't great. Is it Kevin? Um, I hope everyone's okay. I really do. Um, Mill Creek is Salt Lake County. And if you send me mail addressed to Salt Lake City, it will still get to me. But as I understand it, we are not under the dominion of the Salt Lake City mayor. But I don't know. Yes. Um, but I, 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 I kind of... One advantage of being an older person um, is that I have a lot of life experience. I turned 50 this year um, and within 50 years I've never been quarantined. I've never been in a global pandemic. Although there are those that could make the case that the AIDS crisis was one but wasn't treated as one because of who the most common victims were. Um, that was a scary time, but nothing got shut down, um, except certain like gay specific businesses in, in the big cities. Um, but I'll tell you what has prepared me for a lockdown lifestyle. <laughs> hey, hey, Shana. Um, and that was my military service. Uh, in 1993, I joined the Navy, uh, in October 23rd, 1993 and boot camp is eight weeks long, which meant that I would graduate on December 23rd and get home just in time for Christmas. I survived that and boot camp was rough. Now, Navy boot camp is not as rough as Marine Corps boot camp. Um, uh, in, in just, just in pure length of the time. Uh, but it was still very hard. Um, it was like nothing I had ever done before. Um, I was away from everything I knew. 
I was getting yelled at every day. Um, I was being tested on things that I didn't necessarily have control over. Um, and um, I had probably one of the scariest moments of my life in boot camp. Uh, we had uh, two, two companies. I was in company 023, and there was another one. I can't, maybe they were 024. They were our sister company. Um, uh, yes, hi. Um, hi, Eric. Uh, and uh, some things we would do together, the two companies. Um, this was before um, the boot camp went co ed. So when I say sister company, they were all dudes. This was in the 90s, shortly after Don't Ask, Don't Tell came into effect, which was Bill Clinton's compromise. Instead of allowing uh, gay people to serve, uh, he created Don't Ask, Don't Tell, um, which I believe was well-intended, but was brutally, brutally terrible for queer service members. Um, but uh, aside from that, uh, we had the two sister companies and someone in our sister company, a young uh, black recruit had uh, discovered the, someone had scrawled the N word on his locker. Um, and he brought it to the attention of the company commander and in boot camp style, uh, the company commanders punished all of us. That was 200 people. Uh, and including the person who uh, reported the uh, the graffiti, and um, they they did. Uh, gosh, I can't remember what the terminology was. Um, hey, Kitty. Um, it, it was it was brutal. It, basically, they'd yell at us to do various exercises, and we would do them, and. Uh, I mean, kind of from the outside, you, you can sort of see that, that we weren't literally being harmed, um, but we, this was far enough into boot camp that we were kind of programmed that we didn't have a choice in the matter. And um, they, they did what they called make it rain. That's when you got people packed into a room and you exercise them so hard, it raises the moisture content in the room and literally, uh, condensation drips uh, from the ceiling and the walls. They made it rain with 200 people that day trying to find out who had written the n-word on on the young recruits locker. Uh, incidentally, I was the oldest recruit in both companies at a whopping 23 years old. Um, I sort of avoided being called Gramps uh, because I looked younger than another person who was not as old as me. Um, good genetics. Um, and they worked us and they worked us and they worked us and they worked us and it felt like forever. And um, after a while, uh, the, the company commanders started not just punishing us until the, someone spoke up, uh, but they started talking a bit about how we were wasting a whole day doing this which meant we were losing progress. We were losing part of our training for boot camp, which meant we wouldn't graduate on time. And because everything rolled in whole weeks, our December 23rd graduation would become a December 30th graduation after Christmas. And uh, we started turning on each other, you know, which is what they want. Um, you know, just kind of, you got everyone kind of sweating and groaning and, 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 and just shivering and, 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 and breathing. And, and someone would yell, fucking say, speak up, fucking speak up. Oh my God. Fucking speak up. Um, yes, they did. Shana. Um, front back go. I don't know what you're saying, Bryce. Um, but, uh, Eventually, what happened was um, they they stopped. Um, well, that was weird. I just got camera permission denial for a second. 
Um, glad I have a new camera coming in. Uh, so uh, while we were waiting to recommence punishment, uh, the, the young recruit whose locker had been defaced said that he had written it. And to this day, I'm not sure if I believe him. Possibly he did to stir up trouble, but also possible he kind of took the hit so 200 uh, sailors wouldn't miss Christmas. Um, he, I don't know if he got kicked out or if he just got held back and had to do another round of boot camp, um, but he got punished for it. Um, I'm not sure I believe that was his fault, but uh, this was all part of um, how boot camp was very, very hard, and I survived that, and that was two months. So I can uh, survive this uh, limited, uh, kind of shrunk down life for, for two months. Um, and then I got to thinking, you know, what if it's longer? And not that long after boot camp, I went to sea in, in a carrier um, for six months, we were at sea. We were either on the open ocean or in a foreign port. Um, and I think there was one port we were in for three weeks, but most ports we were in for two days or so, uh, two or three days. And that was super hard. And I bawled my eyes out as we pulled away from the pier because I had like three friends by that point because I hadn't even been in San Diego that long. Um, Oh, got it, Bryce. Um, no, that's not. Um, we did an eight count bodybuilder is one I remember, but a lot of it was just um, uh, like push ups, a lot of push ups by count. And you go one, one down, two up. And then they go like one and a half and they'd hold us for like a minute. It was terrible, terrible. And, and just sort of like, standing with your arm out until your your muscles fatigue and it hurts that sort of thing it was brutal um, uh, I have your oh I get I got confused someone popped up on messenger who is also over there in the chat um, six months at sea so I could survive that um, there was some hardships there. Um, some of it was the don't ask, don't tell hardship. Young gay man at sea, trying to keep a secret. Um, there were uh, people, uh, um, <laughs> there were uh, sailors and Marines um, who would actively um, look, try, try to try to catch people out. Because while it was don't ask, don't tell, if someone knew something, then an inquiry could be started. And so they can pretend they overheard something, or they can just say, hey, let's have a random locker check of, you know, Sam and Maddox. Um, or um, it, there was, I mean, this was the 90s. So the, the internet wasn't what it is now, but it existed. And so people would be in um, chat rooms um, spying and that sort of thing. He was rough. Um, thank you, Javier. Um, I think there's, oh, there it is. An intro and a performance piece, it looks like. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so I survived that and, um, Odds are good. This is not going to go for eight months. So um, I've got that I can look back on and say, at least it's not as bad as that. Um, my my mental health is better than it's been in a while. Um, if this had happened three or four years ago, I would be in a much worse place mentally. Um, to be perfectly honest, moving to Utah really broke me. Uh, and it took me um, the better part of 10 years to, to get back up to where I am. And um, this uh, 
quarantine period is 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 going to be a hit to my mental health. Absolutely, um, it's going to require some work, um, but I'm very very fortunate that I've had some great therapy. I have some great medication. Um, my my therapist is gone, uh, but my um, mental health prescribing doctor. I have a phone appointment with her on Monday. Uh, and I'm going to see if we can't get any telehealth therapy going uh, in the interim. Um, and uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but I'll do the best I can. And when I can, I'll keep doing these videos. Uh, a couple of you said they you find them helpful or uplifting or something like that. Um, so that's good. Uh, I, I appreciate feedback. I take requests. Um, you know, if you want, want me to sing or to teach something uh, on, on previous videos, I, I've, I've taught a magic trick. I've, I've taught uh, some domestic skills, um, voice lessons, uh, my Zombie 101 uh, lecture. Um, there's bound to be other stuff. Um, anything writing based. Um, I don't know. I have lots of stories. I've been around, been around the world twice. Um, once with the Navy and once with an evangelical Bible school. Traveling to Bible lands. Um, and uh, both of those trips crossed in, in exactly one place, the city of Amman, Jordan, um, which is incidentally where the best cup of coffee I ever had in my life was. Uh, the, I think partly because there was a ritual to it. Uh, there's this like withered old, you know, uh, withered old brown man um, in a little grocery shop and he made the coffee in this giant copper kettle uh, and he put the grounds in the water um, and, uh, he put in, uh, five different spices. Yes, Bible World Traveler. Um, cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, anise, and clove. Um, and like a lot, so that, uh, the, the grounds kind of look like rich soil. Um, kind of cin cinnamon, like, like orangey brownie. Um, Cooked it all in the pot, dropped in some eggshells to, to settle the um, settle the grounds to the bottom, uh, dipped it out, uh, no, I added sugar right to the pot, and then dipped it out and we drank it in little cups. Um, and I went, went home with like uh, two kilos of that coffee because it was so delicious. And uh, every once in a while I make it at home, not with the big copper pot and the, the eggshells. Um, ooh. Yes, I got some requests. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, for me, it's, it's a very holiday, very Christmassy flavor. Now, I currently can't taste or smell cinnamon, nutmeg, clove. I haven't really uh, been exposed to cardamom recently. Um, cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, cardamom. Anise or anise. Uh, I can probably taste anise because I can taste licorice, but it doesn't taste right. I like the taste of licorice normally, and it's it's one of the um, paranosmic uh, smells. Um, I can smell it, I can identify it, but it smells like something Beelzebub barfed, um, which is sad. But um, there is some hope that my sense of smell and tastes are coming back slowly um and when they do part of my celebration will be to make some of that arabian spiced coffee because damn that's a fine stuff all right um absolutely going to talk about character shelby kitty requested a song um i did this on saint patrick's day uh but i was walking and the video cut and went out of sync a lot um, so this is a, a funny Irish song uh, I learned in San Diego at the Ren Fair. I think at the Ren Fair. It's called Johnny B. Fair. 
Johnny be fair and Johnny be fine and wants me for to wed. Stop it. What is up with this stupid camera? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Heck, oh. oh. don't know why the camera keeps cutting out like that. Um, and it cut out for me. I don't know if it cut out for you or not. Johnny be fair and Johnny be fine and wants me for to wed. And I would marry Johnny, but my father up and said, I'm sad to tell your daughter what your mother never knew. But Johnny is a son of mine, and so he's kin to you. Well, Billy be fair, and Billy be fine, and wants me for to wed. And I would marry Billy, but me father up and said, I'm sad to tell your daughter, but your mother never knew. But Billy, too, is a son of mine, and so is kin to you. Well, Jimmy be fair, and Jimmy be fine, and wants me for to wed. And I would marry Jimmy, but my father up and said, I'm sad to tell your daughter, but your mother never knew. But Jimmy, too, is a son of mine, and so he's kin to you. Well, you never saw a girl so sad or sorry as I was. And if your father sows his, uh, all the boys in town are... The boys in town are all your kin, and your father is the cause. No shit. If your father's sowing oats, well, still you needn't fret. Oh shit, I forgot the. Um, now, daughter, didn't I teach you to forgive and to forget? Your fa so your father's sowing oats, and still you needn't fret. Your father may be father to all the boys in town, and still he's not the one who sired you, so marry who you will. Cute little thing. Um, all right. How to build a character in various formats such as novel, stage, and haunt aspects. All right. Uh, you know the idea of show, don't tell. And um, I think people go too far with that. I think they take it too seriously. Um, but it's more efficient to show than to tell. So saying Johnny is angry um, doesn't tell me as much as Johnny stomped down the stairs and said fine over his shoulder, flipping off his parents with both fingers. Um, I have this camera's just giving me the shits, man. I don't know what's going on. Um, so that's showing through action. Um, if you want to show, uh, what kind of a person someone is, uh, you can show, um, how they look, including what they're wearing, how they move, what they say, and what they do. Uh, in in uh, haunt aspects, you will have a very short time to deliver your character. Um, you may or may not have control over how you look and what you're wearing. Uh, if you do have control, please uh, uh, do it. Um, take control of your character and uh, integrate the various parts that you do have control with. Um, what you say and how you say it, uh, what you do and how you do it, how you pose, how you move, your, your posture and your movement. Um, these can all happen simultaneously. So your, your posture and movement uh, can happen simultaneously um, with uh, words or sounds that you're making. Uh, I mean, you can get as detailed as you want. There's a lot you can deliver uh, right in, a, in, in that brief couple seconds that you have. Um, and in a book, for example, a novel, uh, you can uh, add uh, internal model, internal dialogue, like what they're thinking. Um, and you can tell how they're feeling. But again, uh, showing is more efficient uh, because you can show actions and words uh, and, and indicate feeling. Okay, so... My camera's not cutting out for you. Um, okay, cool. Uh, glad to hear it. Um, since uh, Facebook Live got the, this new format, it's been a little weird. Um, I don't know. I'm being very vague about character. Am, am I at all being helpful, Shelby? 
Um, I think what I what I like to do when I can is um, plan the character from top to bottom, um, and and I'll start with a hook. Uh, I'll start with um, an idea around which the character can be built. So, um, let's say I'm a monster, which I mean loosely, like I, I'm a haunt character, not a victim. Um, and my hook is, I'm extremely hungry, but I'm not allowed to eat. I'm extremely hungry, but I'm not allowed to eat. Okay. Now, uh, typically for hunt characters, we're going to go cannibalistic, right? So um, I, I'm extremely hungry and all these people, all these guests are going by. I'm not allowed to eat them. So let's, let's, let's develop that into a character. Um, uh, okay. Uh, that's, that's, that's like a motivation, right? That's definitely something to build a character around. So, uh, what kinds of characters have hunger, right? Um, we can go vampire, you know, you, you may start with, with the, the type rather than the motivation, but, uh, vampires, which isn't technically cannibalism, uh, definitely hunger. What if it was a cannibalistic clown? What if it was um, someone who uh, um, was possessed by a demon? What if it was a demon? Uh, what if it was, um, let's say, a doctor? All right, so here we go. All right, we're getting there. We're getting something interesting. So uh, we, we know we have doctors at the haunt. So you've got uh, a doctor and the doctor hungers, but is not allowed to eat. He hungers after human flesh because we, we've got we've to go after the guests, right? Um, and as a side note, I'm taking it upon myself to start calling them guests instead of customers because I, I think that's more accurate. Um, audience is also accurate, but it doesn't feel right because they're not seat seated. So guests. Um, okay. Doctor hungers, not allowed. Okay. So again, we're, we're going to, we're going to focus on motivation a bit and then we're going to, uh, build the visuals. Um, uh, who, why, why is he not allowed to eat? Right. Well, I mean, an obvious reason not to eat people is because society says it's bad, but um, generally people who hunger cannibalistically aren't going to be completely concerned with that. But what if, um, what if it's, um, what if he's really concerned with medical ethics? He's not allowed to eat patients. So maybe he can go hunting and, and eat in, in the wild, as it were, but he can't eat patients. But he's going to hunger after them. So maybe his way around it is to eat pieces of them. So they're, they're fine. They'll survive, right? Uh, so we'll eat pieces of them. Okay, so that's the motivation, right? Uh, we can make him... Um, a young dashing doctor or an old kind of twisted doctor. We could make him um, kind of a jovial character or a, a bitter grouchy character. Um, I think uh, of, of those options, I think jovial is probably the most interesting because it's most contrasting with the rest of the character. So uh, yes, Kevin. So we've got a jovial character who hungers after flesh, but no, no, mustn't eat the patients, but cheats, right? He's like someone on a diet who occasionally like sneaks a chocolate. Um, but he's, he's, he's jovial as a character, right? So I think that's enough for the, for the actor to, to really take on a character um, to give you an idea of what sort of things the character would say. Um, you'd have a very jovial voice. 
Well now, hello, welcome my patients. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please come right this way. Oh, mustn't eat, mustn't eat. But, you know, ah, one does get hungry now and then. Never mind, never mind. Let's see, what's wrong with you? Let's, let's take a look at you, right? Um, and then if you want to uh, add um, some visual, some posture and movement, uh, um, I always, when, when a character is motivated by hunger, um, I go to uh, Ian's string uh, uh, analogy where you move as if you're being pulled forward by an invisible string attached to various parts of your body. And it'll give you a very different, um, like right off the bat, just it, it gives you kind of a character feel, right? So a jovial, hungry character. You could lead with the belly, um, I often lead with the mouth for hunger. Um, so, so you're, you're like, uh, uh, hello, uh, welcome. What can we do for you? What can we do for you? Oh, I see. And so as you move, you're, you're leading with the mouth and you're, uh, you know, I, I, I can only be seen from here to here, but, uh, your whole body kind of, kind of follow. So like your, your butt can stick out a bit and it, it might be a bit comic. Um, then I think that would be an interesting, uh, you know, Always, always play with comic aspects of your characters um, in a hunt. Um, you, you're really, uh, you're really missing out if you don't at least explore the comic aspects of your character. Um, and I think uh, that's it. And we're going to dress him as a doctor. Um, the uh, uh, honestly, he wouldn't need much in the way of, of makeup or design. He's, he's just fully human um healthy um if you want to uh, give him kind of more of a haunted look you could give him like hollowed out eyes and kind of sunken cheeks a bit um you kind of um if you give him kind of a, a baked in expression of of worry but he's jovial uh hello welcome how how do we how how are you doing today hi hello um that that can be an interesting effect um so uh yeah so look posture movement um the motivation and story gives you what he's going to do and what he's going to say um and then you can sort of slap on character traits uh, around that so the the hook is hungry but can't eat um but you can go to a different character and you can start with a hook um uh, one of my favorite uh characters i do is Igitur. Uh, who's a vampire who's been buried in a peat bog for 200 years. Um, so he can't die, but he can't feed. Uh, so he's just growing weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. Uh, and just very, very recently uncovered, um, he's like surviving on grubs and bugs. And he's uh, the, the modern vampires think he's kind of gross, right? He's not refined. They all, they all have their... We, we have aristocratic vampires, which I think is boring and done, but that's, that's another story. Um, and so Igator has, has this kind of like very twitchy because, you know, he, he, it fucks with your mind to be buried for, for 200 years. Uh, yes, absolutely. I agree. Movement is, is, is absolutely key. Um, the, the difference between a, a character and a guy playing a character is, is, is largely in how he holds his body and how he moves. Um, you know, the difference between this is a vampire and this is someone playing a vampire. You know, the, the, the whole thing about immersion uh, and, and um, you know, uh, a suspension of disbelief. Um, movement is, is hugely important. Um, if, if I see, no matter how good the makeup is, if I see someone walking as themselves, it takes me right out of it. Um, and as, as a trainer, that's something I, uh, I pick up on a lot. If, if someone wants to develop their character more, um, I'll spend time talking with them about uh, how to move. Um, and that often requires getting into the motivation. What is, what is the character doing? And often they've never thought of it. Like, oh, I'm just a clown. Well, yes, but a clown is a person in a costume. You are portraying a person in a costume. That's three levels of people. Um, so the the uh, the person playing the clown uh, 
Is he tired? Is he grouchy? Is he an alcoholic? Is he, um, you know, what what is that person like? And then what is the clown they are portraying like? Uh, and the interplay of those two characters uh, creates the um, the the final kind of amalgamation character. Um, yeah, I I, I I like Grave Digger's walk. He's good. Um, he's he's uh, he's distinct. Uh, I could recognize Grave Digger from a distance without my glasses because of the way he moves, um, and I think that's a very good um, a very good sign that you've got a good, well developed character. Um, Shelby, mostly I've seen you on like in the dark in the catwalk, so I I, 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 I honestly don't know a lot about how you move. Um, but uh, I, I, Derek speaks super highly of you. Um, and and I, I know uh, Derek has good judgment there. Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, yeah, Derek, Derek talks you up and I keep thinking, okay, I'm gonna keep an eye out for Shelby. And, and um, just for whatever reason, I haven't had a chance to just sort of sit down and watch um, watch you work. Um, so this year I'll, I'll see if I can't uh, do better on that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that carries over into other kinds of character work. So um, I teach an improv class and um, recently I got a chance to guest teach an advanced improv class and I did this same um, talk with them with, with a lot more um, doing exercises and, and moving. Um, less monster focused, but, um, but the same idea. What is the motivation of the character? How do they move? How do they stand? How does the way they hold their head um, affect how the, how the character is perceived? And what I want in improv is for the performer to step on stage as something, right? If you step on as yourself, then um, you, you gotta kind of build something up and it's weak. But if you walk in with a character, with a way of walking, with a way of standing and with a way of speaking, even if you don't already know what you are, you've already started giving stuff to the audience and you'll want to be giving stuff to the audience constantly. Uh, if you're doing something for like uh, musical theater, do the same thing. Um, you don't have control of your dialogue in that case, um, but you still have control over your voice, your uh, posture and your movement. And it does carry over into books. Um, it carries over into writing. Um, because uh, if you really want a well-developed character, do this work for that character in your head. And for that character, you have the extra options of, of things like body type uh, and race and gender and um, disability and, and things that you, you wouldn't uh, be able to do in an okay way, you know, um, as, as an actor, as yourself, right? You're not going to do blackface. You're not going to do... Uh, uh, there are certain accents maybe you can't do so well. You know, there are your, your, your character, your writing can be more flexible than you. Uh, the character you're writing uh, can be bigger, shorter, smaller, thinner, wider, longer, I, um, you know, uh, the hairstyle and all that. So you, as the writer, get to develop all of that. And the thing is, I recommend doing all of that, but you don't have to tell the reader all of that, right? just choose the parts that tell the reader what you need them to know about this character. My characters, usually you don't know what kind of hair they've got. It usually doesn't tell, tell me anything about their character. Um, so I'm fine with the reader imagining the, them however they want. Um, I will generally give enough detail, uh, so that it's, so that the important stuff is there and, uh, you know, like I've got a character, uh, Meg, and she's blind, um, legally blind. She can see a little. She's got like very thick glasses and she reads like this. And she's got long red hair that um, when she reads, it kind of tents around her. So she's like very enclosed. Um, and that speaks to her character. So I did t talk about her hair there. But I have another character, Izzy. Um, Izzy is, is skinny and frenetic. 
um, Izzy is, is a, a trans girl. Um, she, she's got ADHD. Um, you know, I pretty sure I never mentioned her hair. Uh, but Izzy falls in love with, um, Jenny. Um, and when you fall in love with someone, you tend to notice details. So we know more about how Jenny looks than how Izzy looks. Um, that sort of thing. Um, yes, uh, Kevin, that is, um, absolutely. If you've got a very talky character, particularly a frontline character, um, where the guests are going to be talking to you. Um, you want to have uh, a well understood character. You don't necessarily need a novel for a backstory, um, although you can. Um, but you need to understand your character well enough so that you don't have to think when the customer asks you a question. You don't have to think, how will I respond? What will I say to that? You will be the character and you will do the character. Um, you know, instead of um, trying to think of what the character says, you will just open your mouth and the character's words will come out. Um, in in uh, one of my early acting classes, um, I, I created this, this kind of triple idea. So in, in acting, um, you start uh, pretending. And then after you've, you've kind of um, got better, you're acting, right? But then when you're really, really uh, gaining some excellence, you're being, you're, you're, you're being the monster. You start pretending to be the monster, then you're acting as the monster, and eventually you're being the monster. And I'm not talking uh, method acting, I'm just in the moment, in, in the performance. Um, you, you need to stop being the monster when you go home. You need to stop being the monster when your manager comes up to you and says, do you need a break? Um, you know, I mean, well, that's not a great example because you can. Um, you, you do, Kevin, and I appreciate that. Um, and and uh, uh, Gravedigger and Razor uh, skicks every three minutes. Well, I'll do the math on that, Bryce. What's that come out to? How, how, how long is a skix then, if a skix is a unit of time? A skix is three minutes, then, oh, I don't know. Um, all right, so we are at 48 minutes. Um, so I'm going to call it. Um, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, we will uh, come back. I have more stories to tell. I have more things to talk about. Um, and as always, I'm going to um, save this video and upload it to my YouTube channel for posterity because finding things on Facebook is poopoo -poo caca. Love you all. Uh, I will see you in person as soon as I can.